draw here. I like this bet by Tony Lee. X-22, looking a little baffled. He didn't raise before the flop, so he doesn't put him on a pair. So that's why it's a nice bet by Tony Lee to lead out on this flop. He's grimacing over there. You know, he's an amazing poker player, but you can't tell me that he has a poker face. He throws his hand away. I love that bet by Tony Lee right there with the 4-5. Yeah. Nice play to pick up that pot. Well, we are getting close to filling that last seat at the big one, the WPT Championship at Bellagio. Well, you're right, Vance, and we're going to have all these great players from this past season in one tournament with millions at stake. And Shauna Hyatt is going to take a look at this past season and tell us what we can expect from the biggest poker event of the year. It's only appropriate that here on the world's largest stage, we set the scene for the upcoming WPT Championship, a poker event so big that even this place couldn't hold it. The season began at the luxurious Bellagio Casino in Las Vegas, where backgammon pro Gus Hansen took home the cash in the inaugural WPT event. It was Hansen's first final table, but later in L.A., he proved it wasn't his last. Somebody has to win. At the Bicycle Club, Chris Karagoulian was clairvoyant. I'm one of the best. I'm going to win. And outlasted one of the wildest tables of the year. He made a full house. Chris has won the tournament. In Aruba, an amateur from Finland, Juha Helpy, steamrolled pro Phil Gordon. This guy's an amateur? <laughs> In Costa Rica, Jose Rosencrantz went from last to first. Jose knows he's done it. What a great moment for Jose Rosencrantz. Paul Darden laid down the law in San Francisco. I want all the chips. I want you out. Chess master Howard Letterer proved he was king twice, once in Connecticut and once in the Caribbean. A not-so-proper Englishman won in Mississippi. A Swede notched a victory in Paris. And for one night, the dangerous Lane Flack was Hollywood's biggest star. The WPT winners earned their $25,000 entry to the championship table. But take a look at these players who dug deep into their pockets to put up the cash for a seat and a shot at the title. Phil Ivey, Andy Block, Jennifer Harmon, Phil Helmuth, Scotty Wynn, and TJ Cloutier, just to name a few. We've got the greatest players, the biggest buy-in, champions at every seat, and the stakes can't get any higher. This is going to be huge. No. I just can't wait. <laughs> you put those guys in the room together. I don't want to be there. <laughs> Dentist has a 3-6. He's not going to play. X-22 Paul McGrill is in pair of nines this time. Quack, quack. And he's yeah, doing man. that quack, quack thing again. He loves that raise amount. I want to be interested to see when the blinds and annies go up to the next level if he's still going to bet the quack, quack. He's going to have to double his quacks, I think. 22,000 won't be enough to get anybody out the next round. Tony Lee with a 4-5 again. This time he's not going to call it. Now this time Ron Rose looks down and finds two tens. He has a hand here. Oh, he's got to love this. Now Paul McGrill has raised the pot in front of him. He's looking at two tens. He got two tens against two nines, Mike. Remember now, Ron is what we call it in the big blind. He has the most money in the pot before the flop. That means this quack quack bet is 22,000. Going to cost Ron another 16,000 to call. I'm certain he's going to play the pot. He's not going to lay down two tens. He's in position with right. him. Just a matter if he's going to call or raise. Look at X-22. He's doing like monkey see, monkey do routine. Well, I'm afraid Ron might make a monkey out of him if he plays this pot because it'll be two tens against two nines. Look at this. He's going to raise it up. I think he's going up $75,000. Whoa, that's a big bet. He's bet 97000 now. So he's called a and that and just slapped Paul McGrill in the face. Well, I can tell you right now, Paul is faced to the test here because Ron essentially bet half his chips. Two. So what that means is Paul should now know that he's going to be committed to play this pot if indeed he decides to move over the top of him because Ron will be getting about three to one on his money. Two great mathematicians going at it. You can just see the numbers flipping around in Paul's head. I think they got the quacker's tongue a little bit. Paul has a nice hand here. Sure does. But it's shrunk up a little bit when a man moves over the top of you. I'm all in. He's going all in. He has gone all in right he's here. Pushing all it all in. in. He's pulled the ripcord. Whoa, he has put Ron Rose to the test. Fascinating poker here. Well, Ron's got about 90,000 left. He's going to call and he's it. Call it. He's done it. Ron, Ron Rose has done it, and he's going to love it when he sees what Paul has. 
But keep your eye on Paul's face. When Ron turns up his hand, he is not going to like it. It's two tens for Ron, two nines for X-22. Right now, Ron Rose is a big favorite to win this pot. Oh, man, Paul, this could be a devastating defeat for Paul. Ron's Little counting out his chips, and it's a huge amount, about 183,000. Okay, well, they turn it over. Paul, oh, Ron loves it. He gets up, walks away. He knows he's the huge favorite now. And look at the look on Paul's face. He is really disgruntled right now. Ron is up on his feet. He's just pacing. He loves this. He's doing laps. Ron has the best of it. Okay. It's two tens versus two nines. Paul knows he's in trouble here. Here we go with the flop. Can X-22 get lucky? The flop is... He does! Eight, He's nine, hit three of a kind, three nines eight. at this point. On the other hand, has Ron Rose has flopped an open end straight draw. That's right. So he can win the pot with a ten, seven, a ten, or a queen. He does have a lot of outs. A lot of outs here, and we're going to take a little break. We'll be coming right back from Reno, Nevada on the World Poker Tour. Stay tuned. Tour. We are in Reno, Nevada. We have two Eight, poker players nine, that have been mixing it up. Oh, An amazing up. flop, Mike. Well, we have our biggest pot of the day, Vance. Ron Rose is all in. He has gotten out flopped by X-22, yes, who flopped three nines. But Ron Rose is not dead. He's got an open in straight draw. Let's see what happens. Lots of outs. Here comes the turn. An ace comes off. Now that's a heart, too. Now, this also gives Ron Rose a hard draw, so he does have a lot of outs in this pot. A heart, a queen, a 10, or a 7 will win this pot for Ron Rose. But right now, Paul McGrill is out front with the three nines. Last card coming up. A 7 has come off. Unbelievable. Ron knows he made the straight. He has won this pot. He is ecstatic right now. Oh, man, the arm's going up above. This is quite a defeat. Well, look at hands on hips, Paul McGrill. He's shell-shocked here, Vince. Look at that look of disgust. Here's a hand, folks, that you go from ecstasy to total depression, back to ecstasy, all in the same hand. On the World Poker Tour, you see everything. He was ecstatic to see he had tens against nine. He was heartbroken when he see he got outflopped. He was delighted when he outdrew his opponent at the river. What an exciting hand that was. Ron is feeling good right now. He knows he got lucky at the river there. Now, X-22 is not eliminated. He still has a few chips left. Not a whole lot, though, and that is a devastating blow. Let's not forget they're playing for huge stakes here. It's going to be on Ron Rose now, first to act. And Ron's got ace four. And he lays it down. Yes, he does. Dentist has got four three. He's not going to play. Pass pass from Ron and Cal. It's back to the small blind. Now, Paul McGrill has a jack ten of hearts. A nice little hand. He's going to raise it. Why not? That's considered by many to be an extremely powerful hand in Holden Poker. He's betting 22,000. He's quacking again there. He did it again. He did the quack thing. Total bet, 22,000. You know, did Groucho Marx used to do that? Something hmm. like that? Meantime, Tony has a nice hand here. He's got ace-queen. How is he going to play this hand now? He's got a dilemma here. Well, his dilemma is, is he going to call this hand in position or re-raise? The funny thing is, he's saying at this hand, he's going, wait a second. I don't need to be pushed around here so much. He wants to call. The instinct is, I want to call. Copy me 18 more. 16. And look at this. He is calling. He is going to call. Okay, we got to see another flop. That's good. He just calls. He, he call. opts not to re-raise here. Interesting to see how this plays out. Here comes the flop, Mike. Flop is king, queen, king, queen deuce. deuce. Now, this All gives Paul suits. McGrill an open end straight draw. But Tony's got second top pair, pair of queens with an ace kicker. He has second pair with top kicker, an ace kicker here. And look at this. Uh oh. Triple quack quack. What was that? Triple quack quack. That's 66,000 he's betting. That's a big All bet. Triple quack quack. And Tony leans back in his chair. Now, he is really faced with a decision here. 66,000. That's a big bet right here. I admire the guts of this guy. Triple quack quack, he says. On the come. Four to the straight. Can he push the man with the second top pair out of this pot? 
And now there's Tony Lee sitting back on his haunches here, faced with another decision. One more time, his opponent is let out and bet him on the flop again. I call. He's calling. Yes. He is calling here. Now, Vince, in my mind, if he's going to call here, he should just go ahead and put all his chips in the pot. He should set the man all in right here. If you're going to play this hand. Tony is called. Okay. Fourth Street coming up. We call this a turn in poker. And here it comes. Turn card is the nine Oh, it's turned into gin right here. Miracle card. X-22. He's hit the straight. He has the best hand possible. A jack and a ten giving him a king high straight. Now let's see how he plays it. All in. He's got about 60,000 left. He's putting all them all in right all here. In. Yes, he Looks does. Like He's not fussing around. And now Tony's faced with another decision now. Does he want to call 000. another 60,000 on the second pair here? Once again, the board is king. We know he's drawing completely Queen. dead here, which this means there's no card that can come up for him turn. to win this pot. But he's so invested already, so it's almost the worth line. the call down in case X-22 is still bluffing. Well, this in my mind, see, he should have eliminated this decision by setting him all in before. Okay. Well, he is going to call him. That's right. He's not going to like it. Tony Lee is going to lose this pot to Paul McGrill. Paul McGrill hit a nice card on the turn there, giving him the nut straight. He is going to win this pot. Tony's got an ace. Look at Tony's look on his face when he sees this. Oh, yeah. he man. Knows, he knows he's dead, and Paul knows he's won this pot. Oh, oh boy. Do you want to win this pot? Please turn off the last So they're going to turn off here. the last card, but it's irrelevant. X-22 is going to double up right here. That was a very nice pot. 298,000 in that pot fence. Well, he got a little unlucky last hand, but now he gets lucky with the straight, and he's standing up. He's one happy camper. The math genius, the professor, has done it here. He's won a huge pot. When you play with this man, sooner or later, he's crying foul. Quack, quack. Quack, quack. Triple quack, quack. Paul McGrill, also known as X-22, has a style all his own. I want people to react to me. I don't want to have to react to them. If I can get them reacting to me, then I've gained a lot. I like to appear thoughtless and crazy and mindlessly aggressive by acting manic and quack, quack and all this business. That's why I make it hard for even the top players to play against me because I'm very aware of what I look like I'm doing and then I try and go the other way. Paul's not difficult to, to read. You, you may think that. He's just going to be trying to bully us around and push us around with his chips. Paul may think his decoy calling card helps him lure chips to his side of the table, and maybe it does. Quack, quack. He came into this game with the most chips, and the other players know that's no accident. He's a very intelligent person there at the table. Paul McGrill is super aggressive, and uh, he doesn't have to have too many good cards to be aggressive with, right? so... He's not afraid to take the worst of it, so that makes him very, very, very dangerous. Paul McGrill may come across as the friendly, goofy player at the table, but in order to win all the money, X-22 will do whatever it takes. I want to keep on pounding away, and that's when my biggest edge is, when I have a big stack, and I can actually steal a lot of money and also get paid off in the big hands because I have the power to push people around. All these guys playing great poker this afternoon. Okay, it's going to be on Tony first. And Tony this time has 5-6. Not very interesting. And he's going away. Ron Rose with a 6 jack of diamonds. Ron and he throws it away on the button. And again. Now look at this. The dentist has picked up two fives. There goes your man, Mr. Wilson. He's moving all in. He is going all in. Got that one move, and it's been great so far. Let's see if it works again. And the only one he's got to beat here is Paul. X-22, who has a 7-6 in his hand. One thing about it, you need Novocaine when you play against the dentist here because all he does is move all in. It's the only play he makes, Vince. That's very true. We've seen him do this time and time again. I still can't get over his hat. I love his hat. And he's going to take it again. No call. Is that a relief? No. Oh, yeah, sorry. I wanted, he wanted, to I wanted those chips, baby. You made a good lay down. He does take the pot down, and the dentist operates on him one more time. Well, that play works every time but once, the all-in play. <laughs> well, I guess he's hoping that that one time, he, you know, he really has a big hand. He'll catch somebody else with another big hand. Okay, the action's going to be on Ron Rose here, the next pot. Ron looks at his hands. Now, look at this. He's picked up ladies, two queens, a very strong hand, obviously. Big.